Hello class and welcome to this RC Pro-Am NES walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Briggins. I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins, and this is one of the hardest racing games ever released as far as I'm concerned. Between the rubber band AI, the oil slick traps, and just the fact that the orange slash yellowish car decides to turn on God mode every now and then. I'm going to go ahead and give RC Pro-Am a 9 out of 10 in terms of difficulty, which on the frustration scale equates to writhing around on the floor, cursing in tongues, probably because you just hit an oil slick and crashed into the wall and the, the fourth place guy passed you. Meanwhile, the orange car is breaking the land speed record and uh, essentially end it your day. So let's run the intro and see if we can't get you a fighting chance in one of the greatest but most challenging racing classics of all time. Alright, as we start a new game here, let's take a look at the controls for RC Pro-Am. Very simple, but you see right here, left and right are how we steer. We accelerate with B, use our weapon if we have one with A, or just honk our horn quite cheerily and pause with start. And now we shift over, no pun intended, and take a look at the Briggs notes for RC Pro-Am. You can see the real takeaway to beating this game, or just surviving all the tracks, is to know the tracks. And finally, also grab all the power-ups which appear. You can see we're slowing down in this first track just so we can make sure we grab all the upgrades and everything. And with a closer look at all of these items we're picking up, let's go to Blaze. Alright, let's talk about the items you will find in RC Pro-Am. First you have the letters, collect 8 of these to spell Nintendo and you can upgrade... Wait, 8 of these to, <laughs> to spell out Nintendo and you can upgrade your card to the next class. Do this as quickly as possible if you can. Secondly, we have the three different types of upgrades for acceleration, speed, and overall handling for your vehicle. Some tighter turns. Uh, I guess these will help you in a game which is basically rigged, but there you go. Then you have the roll cage, which grants you 10 seconds of invincibility. Thank you very much, Blaze. Yes, again, even if we pick up all of these things, it's still incredibly competitive. You would think if you pick up all these power-ups, because that's hard enough to do when you're vying just a place. And by the way, to continue with the game, you need to place on every single uh, every single track in the game. And by place, I just mean don't come in last. See, it says out right now. You gotta make sure by the time the first car crosses the finish line in first place, that's when the race is over. You gotta make sure you are not in the out position at that point. There's no shame in third. Uh, just surviving and moving on to the next race, that's all that matters. If you uh, do not do it, the game is essentially over and it's a long way back to get back to uh, whichever particular track you lost on. It does get progressively more difficult. There are some tracks in the final third of this game which are incredibly uh, just merciless. And uh, we'll talk about those as we get to them. So we uh, drop some bombs here. It's a good idea to make note of where all the items are on your first lap. Sometimes you only get two laps, so you gotta make sure you grab all the pickups, the Nintendo letters, we can move on to the next car type and get all the upgrades for our car like so. And uh, yeah. And now to take a look at the, the weapons we're picking up, let's go back to Blaze and see what we got. Alright, now let's talk about the weapons you can find in RC Pro-Am. They're limited, but again, give this game some slack. It was one of the first of its kind to introduce combat racing. First we have the missile, my personal favorite. Not gonna go overboard and call it the item of the game as it's not gonna help you out that much, but it fires missiles at the front of your car. Can be a lifesaver when you see that finish line and someone's right ahead of you. Second, quite the opposite, we have the bombs which you can trigger to fall out the back of your ride. Not quite as useful, because if you're in front of somebody, you probably don't need the weapons, but there you go. And then we have the plus one or minus one in the star and the skull, respectively. Good luck, you will need it for this one. He's not lying, thank you very much, Blaze. Yeah, well-placed missile can, can save you and mean the difference between 
getting in third and going home early, so. Fast track conditions. Hopefully that means no oil slicks, but we'll see. It's really the only obstacle which drives me insane. I don't mind the water, I don't mind the inexplicable the barriers that they... By the way, keep an eye on the orange car this race. You can just tell when they get that boost. Looks like they have uh, they've suddenly engaged God Mode, as I call it. I'm not sure what the exact name for it is. But uh, at this rate, they're going to lap us, which is just infuriatingly insane, if you ask me. <laughs> and completely unnecessary. I'm not really sure why the, uh, the sadists at Rare decided to... Um, yeah, and look at that. They almost lapped us. And, you know, it wouldn't be an issue. I mean, you want first place, obviously, but that's just impossible when that happens. But uh, you just you need to make sure that the the orange car, which is, uh, again, breaking the land speed record, <laughs> breaking the sound barrier, is uh, just got to make sure that you are not in last place when they are about to cross the finish line. Because, again, that's when the entire race ends for everybody. Seems like they've come back down to earth in this particular race. But uh, there you go. Yeah, not sure why they put these little walls that pop up and uh, try to murder the drivers of these vehicles on these courses. Not not sure who's behind the designs of these things, but uh, not for me to judge, I suppose. Again, I don't mind those. They don't bother me all that much. It's just the it's the oil slicks that drive me insane. Couldn't quite get the blue car with the missiles there. Just throwing everything we had at him right there as we get the, the wishbone trophy. And our bonuses look pretty good right now. You'd think we'd have a substantial advantage over these other cars, but they seem to evolve just as quickly as we do. And while I contemplate just why Rare hates us as much as they do, let's throw it to Fluff for our first Fluff fact about RC Pro-Am. RC Pro-Am was developed by Rare a long-time British game developers known for their partnership with Nintendo before being acquired by Microsoft in 2002. Founded by ex-arcade video game developers and brothers, Tim and Curtis Stamper, initially under the forgettable name Ultimate Play the Game, Ultimate evolved into Rare in 1985. Rare would go on to create a number of best-selling Nintendo games from Wizards and Warriors, Battletoads, the Donkey Kong Country series, and GoldenEye 007. Since being acquired by Microsoft, the quality of their output has dipped a bit, but the developer will always have a special place in the hearts of Nintendo fans of the 80s and 90s. Yeah, Rare made, uh, yeah. <laughs> they ate up a lot of hours of my life when I was a kid. I have to say, just Donkey Kong Country, Trilogy on the Super Nintendo, GoldenEye 007 in particular, just so many. Fantastic hours, as we have our first car upgrade. Looks like a, I don't know, a, a Bobby car or something from England in the 1930s or something. I'm not sure, 40s. I don't really know. I'm not up on my uh, British history from that or any decade, really. But, uh, yeah, trying hard to... I guess this is an upgrade over a truck, but in terms of speed, I don't know. It's an odd design, very boxy. Now I just have my eye on that orange car waiting for its next crazy burst. You never know when it's going to take over. But, uh... Yeah, grab that N. Keep going to try to... That's sort of my main goal, aside from just placing in all these races. I just essentially want to collect all the letters and uh, upgrade the car on schedule. Poor track conditions. That usually means oil, and I can see some right there. Couldn't just wipe this up before the, uh, before the race. Help me out, Rare. That's all I'm saying. Grab a bunch of these roll cages. It's nice that when you hit the oil and you fly into the wall with the roll cage, you don't explode. But, uh, still awful annoying just to lose control of your car and go in the wrong direction right there. There we go. I like it when it works out in our favor. <laughs> get turned around like that. Yeah, at this point in the game, I'm always happy for a first place. But, uh... 
I don't think the experience is really any different. And again, I... It seems impossible, assuming the, uh, the god mode kicks in for that orange car every now and then, so... You really have no control over when, uh, when that happens. And at that point, there's literally no way you can win that race, so... Pretty stupid feature, but uh, overall this is obviously a great game. I enjoy it very much. One of my favorite racing games on the NES, along with Rad Racer. And I was always a big fan of Super Sprint as well. Kind of a smaller top-down view. The, the little cars, but it was nice you do the two-player simultaneous and everything. And it was just fun kind of using one player to, uh, to kind of play mischief. And uh, be the, uh, the heartbreaker. And uh, disturb, essentially. Run interference, I guess is the best way of putting it. Against the CPU cars. And you could kind of knock them off track, make them go the wrong way, so they it would be a whole lap behind you while your your brother or your friend or just you know your sister, whoever you're playing it with, would uh, go ahead and win the race on both of your behalves. It was nice, kind of a co-op without actually being a co-op game. I like the tracks, obviously, with more laps, as it gives you more time to learn the course, which was. One of the main Briggs notes. It's not just about knowing the layout of the course. Again, it's about knowing where the traps are, the oil slick in particular, so you can avoid them, hopefully by the fifth lap. Also gives you more time just to survive, essentially. The, uh, the, the races, which are just two laps, it's way too short, difficult to get any items at that point. And orange is taken off, it looks like. Not sure. Oh, they did spin out, though, on the oil. I can appreciate that. But they recovered. <laughs> Thank you, God Mode. Thirteenth track. You're now halfway through this game, actually. It's only going to get more difficult. We still haven't hit one of the... what I would consider to be an objectively difficult course yet. Most of these have been pretty manageable. take water all day, you know? If anything, it just provides better traction as it slows us down. Those little pop-up walls aren't too difficult to avoid. Localized rains, very localized rainstorms. Can't get much more localized than those. <laughs> Must be uh, in the same town that uh, Paperboy lives in when they those very localized tornadoes which occupy just a handful of pixels on the screen. Another first place. Quite happy with that. And as we try our best on level 14, let's get another fluff fact about this game with fluff. The looser and combat-based racing style of RC Pro-Am was a departure from most of the racing games of its time, which offered a comparatively more conventional, behind-the-car perspective and no-frills racing experience. The perspective, and particularly the combat aspect, made the game quite novel for its time, and it has been credited as being a major influence in later battle-based racing games like Super Mario Kart and Rare's very own Diddy Kong Racing for the Nintendo 64. With over 2 million copies sold for the Nintendo, this is Rare's best-selling game for the system, and put Rare in rarefied air as being one of the very few non-Nintendo developers for the NES to reach the 2 million copies sold mark. Yeah, that is, uh, that is rare air, as he put it. Not a lot of developers got there outside of Nintendo themselves. It's a fun concept, fun little twist on the conventional racing style of games. Between, you know, the perspective and the fact that we're dealing in remote-controlled cars and everything. Sometimes I forget that that's like the gimmick. Just, you know, it's just cars on a track from a different perspective and you can shoot out missiles and things like that. That's all we cared about. I don't think anyone was thinking about the scale or anything. Not quite as micro as micro machines, of course. Another uh, kind of deceptively difficult racing game. There we go. There's one of those dramatic 
missile assisted finishes that I was looking for. And we're doing great with the power ups. Might have something to do with the fact that we have uh, been placing pretty well as of late. I think track 17 was pretty difficult. Some of the later teens and most of the 20s. Let's we get into the final third. But again, anything with five laps, pretty manageable. Of course, if there's lots of oil on the track, it's, you know, it's that's the wild card. Again, does give you more time to get a feel for the track and know where the oil slicks are. Orange missed it there, obviously. By which I mean they ran straight into it. Darn those rubber band physics, though. Can we talk about that for a second? I mean, you know. Someone, uh... Someone bails out. And, or, you know, you hit them with a very nicely placed missile. And they're right back in your grill, what, five seconds later? Not realistic. Not sure why it's a thing. But, uh, yeah. It's like games don't want to reward you for your good play, you know? If you're having a good race, they say, nah, it doesn't matter. Just kind of keeps an even keel throughout the whole thing for whatever reason, but, uh, that's fine. And look at that. What a bad time to not have any missiles. It cost us first right there. But that's all right. Softened by the fact that we just upgraded our car for the final time. We got the, the sleekest, lowest profile rides. And they handle decently well. But that also means that they can make the tracks a little more difficult. Here in this final stretch, it looks like everybody got a roll cage. Good for them. Just want to grab that N early on. I guess technically it doesn't matter at this point, considering we uh, don't have another car upgrade after this, but still. Just my side goal, as I said, that's a bad time to bail out. I think I'm fighting for third here, there we go. That missile might have saved our game right there. It certainly did, wow. Not sure we would have caught up to, uh, to blue in that case. Yeah, we're getting into the point in the game where you just, you just want to survive. Third is just fine. Absolutely zero shame there. Two laps. Just cruel. Two laps and a bunch of oil. Sounds like a country song, but here in uh, RC Pro-Am, it's my worst nightmare. Grab the uh, accelerator there. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Just goes to show on these shorter races how uh, anything can happen there. It's a whole... Whole adventure condensed into about 60 seconds. Probably why this game was so popular. Pick up the, what always looked like whoopee cushions to me. The bombs. There the oil isn't too bad except for that last bit and then you get kind of turned around with your controls. It's always a little extra satisfying. Using one of your weapons on the, uh, the orange car. Just kind of stick it to him a little bit, you know? They're the ones uh, pulling up third right now, actually. Yeah, that's murderer's row right here at the end. Always hurts to have to take your foot off the gas, but uh, in that, that oil slick central there at the end, it's, it's tough. Oof. Okay, I'll take that. Again, slowing down here. It's nice to see it does affect the other cars every now and then. Unless orange is on god mode and they're just, you know... Go in the distance, to reference cake a little bit. Speaking of god mode, is there any rhyme or reason for it, Fluff, as far as you know? Be careful about not going too heavy on the weapons. Doing so in one of the computer cars will become impossible to beat. Not to mention they will go at least twice as fast as every other car with a flawless run, and will end the race sooner for you. So make sure you're at least in third place when they cross the finish line. Interesting way to encourage players to use the game's weapons, if you ask me, a rare. It's a very good point, Fluff. Yes. I'm not sure if I was going heavy on the weapons when Orange went crazy before. That was kind of early days, but 
We haven't seen it again since. Either way, yes. Like you said, just... Just make sure you're in a... You're in third or better by the time that uh, they're crossing that finish line. Then you have to sort of keep an eye on their car as well on that mini-map. Six laps. I will take that. So we gauge how much oil we have here. Oof. I've run these courses quite... Oh, that's bad. You're trying to turn after a crash. And that uh, but the... Uh, the direction trying to turn into the wall just it's it just won't work out this isn't looking good <laughs> if this were uh, anything less than six laps i would say this is over right now uh, we will see we'll see what happens everyone seems like they're still down to earth right here this is a very challenging track in particular Sometimes you wonder why even use the weapons, you know, when you just know the rubber band's gonna have them right back in the thick of things, you know, 10 seconds later. Feels good. You get points for it, but, you know. Pressure tends to get to you when you're, or me at least, when you're, you're in first, going into the final lap and just things start to unravel. Oh, uh, and I'm turning into the... Okay. <laughs> oh, this is... So frustrating. And then completely unexpected, but there you go. You never know what's going to happen in RC Pro-Am. Might be the final gold we take home here in the, as we head into the final three tracks. Here in RC Pro-Am, got that murderer's row of oil right there at the start. I kind of want to just go crazy on the bombs right now and see what happens to Mr. Orange there, but... Let's not, uh... Let's not rock the boat. Wake the sleeping dragon, poke the bear, etc., you know. Be nice if the roll cage just completely negated the spin out from the oil, but... I realize that's not realistic, and yes... Realize we're talking about a video game from well any era. Realism is not really there. We go. Take that orange. Ironically, orange is the one we have to keep at bay right now. It's our only chance. Oh, and he's making a play on us too. Oh, he hit something there. Come on, blue, cross that finish line. There we go. Nintendo. Be very happy if not only if we finish just placing these last two races, but get the dough as well. Consider that a successful play in a game that doesn't really have an ending. We never really got that list going, but uh, oh, that's just. And then the brain just stops working. At least in the context of what the game expects from me. Let's see if we can recover from this. But in Jinx myself, that is not doing myself any favor. Oh, wow, that was really short. Okay. Didn't even catch it. That was three laps. All right. The final track in the game is nine laps. That is not a typo. So uh, while we go around and around and around and around six more times after that, let's throw it to Fluff for one final Fluff fact about RC Pro-Am. Despite the box clearly advertising 32 tracks, every track after 24 is a repeat. And the car even ceases to change at this point. Is it too late to sue Rare for false advertising? That's what I'm saying, Fluff. Or maybe uh, just sue over whatever they put under the hood of that orange car. That uh, just seems to turn it on whenever it uh, whenever it wants to. Yeah, this is uh, this might be the hardest track actually because it requires just perfect runs almost every lap just to remain competitive. There's no reason to use your bombs, even though I can't help myself sometimes. I know we're on lap three of nine, and we have a long way to go, but... You know, when someone's right behind you, you just you can't help but hit that A button. Now I'm down to two. <laughs> we just have to keep someone behind us. I don't have any delusions about taking home the gold in the final race, but... 
just to stay competitive. Although right now, halfway through, we are uh, we're keeping pace here. Amazing the sounds that come out when you... Ah, that hurts. If nothing else, with nine laps, it gives you a chance to really understand the... Can't help myself. Understand the track by the uh, the final lap. You know exactly when to start in with that turn. There we go. That's pretty clean. As long as I don't hit any, uh, hit any sides in that final stretch there. Uh, and we are dry. We are officially out of weapons. We're gonna have to win this with good old-fashioned racing skills. Just hugging those turns. I need to bring up the lyrics to uh, the distance. As yes, I realize this is the second time I've referenced that song in one class. Just feels very apt. Certainly more so than the Ninja Gaiden class we did. Or most of the classes for that matter. Oh my god. I mean, this is what the this is what the crowd wants to see, right? Just probably just someone walking their dog, passing by in the park. But all jumbled up, going into the final lap. This is anyone's race right here. We have manufactured drama. I think it is safe to say. All right then. <laughs> Whatever. We did it. That's a win in RC Pro Am. And let's see if the car does switch over. So we're on level 25, but it's the original and we're on the same car. I'm done. Got nothing else to prove. Thank you so much for attending this class. We do one of these classes every single week. Please consider subscribing to uh, enroll. And uh, yeah, hit that like button if you don't mind. It helps us out to keep making subsequent classes for you. And leave a comment. What's going on with that orange car? And we'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.